Okay, so just so by the way, so Tanil is a Chicago Land Chicago Land Mom Squad founder. Um, so she's she's our group founder. We're a group of um, thirteen over thirteen um, thousand women from the Chicago area. Mothers, I should say, mothers, aunties, grandmas from the Chicago area. Um, Dr. Femi is our resident principal <laughs> and parenting uh, expert, and um, and then my name is Tony, so I'm the one that's been um, corresponding with you. I hope it's not offensive. Oh, no, not at all. Black men expect, black men of that caliber expect black women to be women. Femininity. A lot of y'all are men. A lot of y'all are men. Oh, no, 100%. But that's because it's not enough masculine energy around. How can we be feminine? But we can't make that excuse. You, what, what excuse? See, we ain't talking about Joe. We're not talking about the scene. We're talking about that one percent. thing. But what I'm saying is you, we said, you said we're masculine because there's not enough masculine, uh, masculine energy, energy around. around. What if men started saying we're feminine because there's not enough feminine energy around? Because, it, I mean, that's... that's. But we can't say that, is my point. I guess it's because when, when, when women are raised, we're raised to be strong. We're not necess- we don't necessarily know what even masculine really means. You feel me? To even say, like, oh, you're masculine. Because if I'm raised without my father and all I know is my mom, so you're telling me, really, my mom... Is masculine. Okay, so you feel me? So I really don't have a broad, like a real sense of, oh, that's a nigga. You act like a nigga. But you, you proved act- my point. You said, because before you said that um, there are not enough men to go around. And then you said men need to do this, 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 and this. And now you're saying that I don't know what masculine is. No, no, no. For a woman. Yeah. For a man. Yeah. But it's the same energy. Is it? A man being masculine, a woman being masculine, masculine is masculine. So now it doesn't look well. It doesn't look right when a woman does it, but it's still masculine energy. Because what is masculine energy for on a woman? What do you think it is? It's hard to, for me to know. Um, I mean, for me to say, because I've had men say that I, I do have like masculine energy. I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll explain it in one word: agreeableness. Agreeableness. So, because men have been socialized to be competitive. Okay. And what that means is, okay. I can't just take what the world gives me. Okay. I have to chart my own course the whole night. So mm-hmm. if I'm presented with information, I have to first be critical of that information. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, hmm, right? Mm-hmm. This, is the, this is the math mapping. Women, on the other hand. But we're raised that way. I understand that. Women, on the other hand, if you are going to be a queen, right? Okay. You have to submit under the authority of a king. 100%. So when the king says something... It's you got it, babe. That's 100%. agreeableness. 100%. Now, I the agree. problem is a lot of women think they're kings. Why are you the landlord? Yes, you. About to get into a um, <laughs> commercial there. So that is, and I'll, let me, po- oh, I closed it, but I'm going to post that. So if people want to watch the whole conversation, it's very, very interesting. And something I just, I have never thought about. Have you guys ever thought about? masculinity in women yeah all really? the time what Femi and I are leaders what the hell Femi how many ta- how many times a week do you get that oh oh I you know oh can, we we actually we need three three segments off the bat okay? <laughs> three segments <laughs> minimal <laughs> we got a lot to say okay but yes all the time. but I'm yeah a, I just I don't know I, I never I guess I've never thought about you know like equating leaders leadership to masculine energy, you know? But you know what, Tony? Um, I think that sometimes like some of that mm-hmm. is also because I think that you have the the kind humbleness mm-hmm. of a southern woman. And I mean that in the most, you know, <laughs> humble way. Like southern I think it's from, no, Tanil, you act like you're from Chicago. Okay. Uh, <laughs> But no, Tony, you just kind of have that humbleness. So I can see that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and maybe yeah. I mean, and maybe that's something that something to something to to think about, talk about. I don't know. Either way, I think um, what we're going to be talking about today. I'm really looking forward to our conversation because I am in love with this YouTube channel that I've come across. We need to talk. Thanks to the YouTube algorithms, <laughs> 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 it popped up, and you should watch this. And I was like, what is this? 
I'm in love with the the black, the white background, the black t-shirts and that brown tan tan chair. Just like it's it just works for me. But I, I think the it. really the reason I really like it is just it's a very civil but needed conversation. Like we can have these conversations. They don't have to be like um they don't have to be antagonistic. You know, I think we can have these conversations about what's going on with our relationships in our community. They don't have to be antagonistic. So that's what we're going to talk about today as we people. So as people start to filter in, welcome moms. Um, we're going to get started with uh, Tanil. You want to start us off? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> First of all, I hope everybody had a fabulous Mother's Day. I had a fabulous Mother's Day, as you all can tell. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to Atlanta. The Rosé Festival is coming to Chicago at the end of June. Went to check it out in Atlanta first. I test, taste tested all the drinks for everybody. Make sure <laughs> we're, we're good. good. Yeah, we're we're good. We're 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 good. We're good. Um, but welcome. I needed that break last week too. I was able to get in the yard last Monday, so I'm excited about that. But welcome to Monday Night Mom Chat. I am Tanil Jackson. I never say my name, and I'm a daughter of one, 13 year old, and we've been 13ing, so that's been very interesting. Um, but I'm excited about tonight, and I think Tony. I know you'll say this, but This show has been planned for weeks. So even with uh, Kevin Samuel's untimely death and all that stuff, and I know our guests will explain everything, this show has been planned. So I don't want people to think this is a play on, but I think it's going to be a timely conversation. So I'm excited. And Feeney's back. Hello, Feeney. Tanil. Oh, you know what? I never the, the jealousy that's exuding. I took one week off and I just happened to also be booked on another show. And Tanil has not let me live that down. Listen, I I am your resident principal, uh, Dr. Femi Skanes. I'm really excited to talk about our uh, relationships because I have quite a bit to say. Happy Mother's Day to all of our moms, to all of our mom figures. Um, you know, it, it, I think that this Mother's Day has been interesting. Um, and I've really, my heart has really been feeling quite heavy. You know, a lot of times we think about uh, those of us who are without our moms. But this year, my heart was really bleeding from moms who had their first or uh, or another Mother's Day without their uh, children. I, I, I just can't even imagine the grief that goes along with this. So um, just for any of our moms that might be in that category, know that there are those of us who are still thinking about you and praying for you and that we love you. Amen. Well said. Yes, well said. very well said. We want to turn right, it over Mr. to Alan. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Alan Obi. I'm the voice behind We Need to Talk. By day, I am a dad and a user experience researcher. By night and weekend, I uh, I make documentaries. So I'm really happy to be here. I'm excited for the conversation, and thank you, guys. Well, thanks for joining us. And my name is Tony Husbands. I am a mom of two. Um, a, and a 10 year old and one who just finished his first feature film this week. So we got a movie coming out. Y'all. Mm. <laughs> That's what be exciting. Um, whole, a whole, um, uh, what they call it? The screening, the, the screening premiere, whatever coming up in November and everything. So that was exciting. Long, a lot of work. Um, but I am glad to be home. Um, let's see. I am also the co-founder of debt free divas and a long-term member of the Chicago lamb mom squad. So yes, we are going to talk about these relationships, folks. So, <laughs> way to kick us off. Way to segue into this. Um, so, I ran across um, you. We need to talk, um, and just was immediately, like I said, immediately kind of pulled into the conversation. Um, we're going to pop that link in the the comments so that after this conversation, you all can can head over there and check out um, Alan's content, his interviews. He even has an interview himself, which was actually pretty interesting. Um, And I want to know, just to kind of start us off, Alan, is why did you start this channel? Like, what was your, like, goal behind it? Like, what are you hoping to accomplish? Yeah, so um, what you guys see is actually the rebirth of uh, an organization I started in college by the same name. So um, in college, I was NAACP president. And we started We Need to Talk as like a conversation series to help kind of bridge the divide between black students and white students. And naturally, um, white students didn't show up. (laughs) So we ended up talking amongst ourselves. And the conversation that would come up is uh, men and women and why we can get along. So um, at our peak, we were at seven different universities. Um, Mm -hmm. But once I graduated, 
and I was trying to get my life together. I couldn't really focus on it. And, uh, you know, the, the style of conversation we did was really unique. So I, I didn't have time to really cultivate other people to pick up the mantle. So it died for a minute and then, you know, oh. quarantine hit. So it died for a minute. So uh, YouTube is kind of a resurgence of, you know, that mm -hmm. conversation. And I try to make it more intimate and make it as simple as possible. And that's what you guys see today. Okay. I love it. And what are you by the way? So I'm turning 29 tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> happy early birthday! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you. Like, you talk about some. Oh. <laughs> I get, I get it a lot. I get it a lot. <laughs> Did you restart it? I see everything says Kevin Samuel started this conversation. Did you rebirth it around the Kevin Samuel stuff, or so initially? Um, the Kevin Samuels being in the title, what is that? The Kevin Samuels being in the title was a SEO decision. It was a strategic, Mark. you know, a strategic decision because I had, uh, I'd done a video called is Kevin Samuels a necessary evil. And mm -hmm. when I was looking at the analytics, Kevin Samuels kept popping up. So I was like, okay, how can okay. I create a conversation around the conversations Kevin Samuels is having, but okay. take that, tone that everybody criticizes him for not having. So that's kind of where we are now. So it works for you. Thank is you. Is he a necessary evil? What, yes. what did you conclude? <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well why why do you think that um why do you think that his is it just the is it just the tone that is so challenging for people mm -hmm. to accept or and I guess it's not it's not challenging for everybody because he had Quite a few. Um, he had quite a few followers, and a lot sure. of women would call into his show. I, I just, I just learned about him within the last month or so, right? I'm like, oh wow! Okay. Yeah. So I just, I just, and I just learned about him only because he went to my, we went to the same um, undergrad, mm -hmm. and some people in a different group I'm in, of OU group, were kind of talking. I'm like, who is this person, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and they were just kind of like Rah! the women anyway, like, Rah! you know, yeah. and and so I'm like, who is this guy? And then. A, of course, with some first clips, I was like, why is he so mean? Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> like, what did somebody do to him? You know, that was kind of my initial, like, reaction. But yeah. as I got to watching more, you know, and actually, like, making myself kind of sit through um, some of the meanness, there is actually a, there's a, there is a, a useful nugget in there, mm -hmm. you know, a useful nugget of information in there. And that's why I like what you, what you're doing, because it, we're taking out the, antagonism and let's let's deal with the meat of the conversation because yep. it is you know it is so so do you think that that and, and maybe it's like one of those things what bleeds leads basically mm -hmm. you no know, it's like the, the controversy sells do you mm -hmm. do you find like your style is 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 um effective in reaching enough people or being you know being an alternative to that um i think you know, because he he's he's spoken about why he took that approach. Right. Um, because initially when he was on YouTube, he was talking to men. And, you know, as an image consultant, he took a more Simon Cow, Gordon Ramsay approach where he's like the, the, the anti hero. Right. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, I think a bit of if it bleeds, it leads is a part of his success, you know, because. Um, you know, World Star and Shade Room and different, you know, right. outlets like that pick it up if it's provocative. Right. Um, right. But, you know, for me, ironically, <laughs> you might not believe it, but I, I used to have that approach in my personal life. Mm -hmm. I used to, when I would engage in conversation, I would try to dunk on people. That's how I put yeah. it. I would try to cross you over, break your ankles and dunk on you. Mm -hmm. But then I realized it wasn't effective. I realized that, you know, if this person saw me as an other, if this person saw me as a threat, they wouldn't engage with me with honesty. It would just be defensiveness and vice versa. Like at that point, I'm not listening. I'm just trying to, you know, dunk on you and vice versa. So, um, you know, for me in my personal life, you know, having conversations with girlfriends or my mother or my sisters, I'm like, OK. Let let me let me be more strategic. Let me take mm -hmm. the calmer approach. Okay. And uh, I have to say it's been working out. So what what I'm actually trying to do with this channel is model that for other men so they can have more effective conversations. In their I life. love it. Yeah. So, you know, I wanted to jump in um, and I think 
really conversations um conversations are the name of the game so uh early on the comment was um really about men and women um, not being able to get along with each other. Mm. I'm not going to agree that men and women can't get along with each other. Um, my perspective mm. is that men and women sometimes struggle with how to communicate with one another. Mm. Um, and so because we struggle with how to communicate with one another, I think that that makes it seem like we just don't get along. But no, you're going to argue if you don't know how to communicate. Um, in today's society, um, for so many different reasons, you know, I just feel like right now everybody is in this defensive battle where mm. I don't want to be I don't want to be seen as submissive or inferior to anybody. So it has everybody's guards up at all exactly. times. Yeah. And so now what is happening is that if you start to talk about gender roles in any kind of way, mm -hmm. then people are automatically defensive. Like, I'm not about to lay down. But, you know, I say this all the time and I'm like, I, you know, as we all know, I don't really care what people have to say but I don't struggle with gender roles um in my marriage you know like my husband is the man I'm the woman and we compliment each other mm -hmm. because guess what at the end of the day I, I don't have to know how to change a flat tire and some people are like you got to be able to take care of yourself I can't take care of myself I can take care of many things but my husband literally would not allow me to change a flat tire mm. because it, he feels his job is to take care of me. I mean, and he's like really adamant about that. So mm. I just wonder if we could let our defenses down and, and say like having gender roles doesn't necessarily mean like that doesn't mean I have to wash his clothes by hand. Like that's not what that means. So I think mm. that's one of the struggles. So Girl, I wonder how, how does that... <laughs> No, what you say? What you, oh. <laughs> oh, I wonder how does that translate into what we're teaching our kids? Because that's what we're that's kind of the topic tonight is like how mm. we're we are raising the next generation of spouses, right? right. And um and unfortunately the 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 relationship numbers in the black community aren't looking so hot in terms mm. of in, in terms of you know the numbers of divorces. I think we're the black community is higher than any other ethnic group in the country. Yeah. The numbers of people getting married period i think one i think one out of four black women can expect to marry in their lifetime which is the lowest among all the groups of different ethnic groups um we're more likely to get divorced you know and then those those second marriages are more are like 80 percent likely to not to not last so there's a lot of struggle um <laughs> in terms of the in terms of Sunil the stats. looks I mean, uh, defeated kind of, right, it can be kind of um depressing yeah. but the the eternal optimist i'm like okay so what do we need to do to like turn this around you know mm -hmm. and i'm not saying that we're gonna have all the answers i don't even expect you um alan i almost called you obi alan, <laughs> to have all the everybody the calls me obi it's fine <laughs> <laughs> uh, to have all the answers either but what but looking at like those gender roles looking at communication mm -hmm. styles because women and men communicate differently you know right. and I, one of the things i'm learning even after being married for 20 years even watching you guys is like content is just like thinking about the fact that yeah i'm a chatterbox and my husband is not and that's all mm -hmm. you know like i'm not Balance. that i haven't known that but it's okay like we, yeah. we have different styles of communication and like how do we like bridge those so that we can both, you know, we can meet in the middle somewhere in terms of like not having those, um, not being disagreeable or not having those conflicts that just stem from not being able, to, being able to communicate well. And then how do we teach our kids, you know, to be able to relate to the opposite gender mm -hmm. um, in, a, in, in a healthy, so that they can develop healthy relationships? Like, what are we doing? I mean, you have a, you have older teens and so, I was just going to say that I will say I am so thankful for my daughter's, her first boyfriend. Um, I'm so thankful for his mom, um, Ooh. actually his mom and dad. Right. But I will say, so he lived with his dad, but his mom would come in on the weekends and she and I just ended up having a really good relationship. And if we didn't do anything well, we complimented each other with teaching them how to date in a healthy way. Um, and so like she would take them places. I would take them places. We let them date each other. Right. All of these mm -hmm. people are like they don't need a boy. No, it's developmentally appropriate to like each other because those hormones are coming, whether you try to suppress them or not. At what so, age was her boyfriend, Femi? So uh, at 16. Okay. Um, and they, they 
well, they broke up uh, senior year and their breakup was like, it was devastating. It was devastating for me, oh, for her. Okay. For, like he was at home crying. My daughter was at home crying. It was really hard. But I, and she and I are still like good Facebook friends or whatever. But I think that she and I did a really good job of like teaching them how to date. Um, when he was wrong, she would tell him when my daughter was wrong, I would tell her like, you know, I would say like, hey, I'm telling you, if you talk to a boy like that, that's emasculating him. Let me tell you what what mm-hmm. result you're going to get. Okay. Um, he did a couple of things that his mom was like, no, nah, like that's not cool. So I said all of that to say instead of doing this thing where we push like, no, nah, we're not doing all of that. Like I wasn't trying to arrange her marriage. I, we were just really trying to say we wanted our kids to date in a very healthy way. And so I think that that's key. But for me, one of the things that I think is key is that kids need to see parents in healthy relationships. Um, My husband and I don't really, um, we we try not to argue too much in front of the kids. Oh, we have our fair share, right? And it's been a couple of times where he had to tell me, like, don't talk to me like that in front of the kids. Mm -hmm. Um, Because it's like the dynamics of what happens. But we also are very loving in front of each other. I mean, you know, in front of our kids. So I think it's the intentionality around dating and, and not making sex like taboo. I, I've said to my kids, like sex feels good. You know, we do this thing like you don't want to have sex. Mm, well, if we don't want to have sex, then why are we having it? Right. Like stop saying that to kids because it only makes them want to know. But but it feels good until you itching and scratching. It mm. feels good until. So then you have to like have honest conversations. So I said all of that to say, I think that honesty and intentionality are the key um, when raising kids to, to engage in healthy relationships. Mm. Ready just said it. Ready, that's a good point. Ready said, bring back children being invited to wedding. And yes. Then, and then Tamika said, it's wow. harder. Wedding anniversaries. It's, yes. It's harder. And then Tamika said, it's harder being single because everyone can't be involved or hands on with our kids because we're dating. And I think she said something also earlier, just basically about, you know, and I, and I, and I'm, I'm happy about this conversation, but it is that challenge of being single where you do want to, you know, you want to demonstrate to your child something. Right. But not at any cost, Mm -hmm. even if that looks like for me, it's just looking for it. Our co-parenting relationship is good. Right. Even though things didn't work out, man, your dad is great. You know, Ray is the bomb, blah, blah, blah. So that she at least understands from a nurturing standpoint. But my dates and stuff. No. (laughs) But you know what? But but why can't she see you date sometimes? Right. She knows I date. And without putting all my business on the Internet, um, (laughs) Back, I mean, because you guys know I've been divorced for eight years. So at one point, if I'm in a long-term relationship, I don't hide that, you know, hey, mommy's going out. I, she sees me getting dressed, all that other stuff. But the way I'm dating, <laughs> she, can't, she can't see everybody. <laughs> that's not, yeah. That's so, not I, Helen, I'm curious. You mentioned, those, so we're talking about the single single um, moms. You mentioned yeah. that, a, a not, but correct me if I got this wrong, because I didn't Sure. Write it down, but it was something about like a single mom can't raise a boy, yes, man or something like that. So yes. please cor- correct me. What I mean, say you what it, say up in <laughs> here it comes. Here it comes. So say, no, say your statement, and then kind of can you kind of explain? Can you expand on that a little bit about you know your man. perspective about that statement? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, wh- whenever I have conversations about relationships, particularly, you know, black relationships, I, I come at it from a like a historical perspective and also a psychological perspective. I'm I'm somewhat of a psychology nerd because I work in research okay. and masculinity for millennia has always had some rites of passage. Uh-huh. Right? You had to go live in the forest for a week or something and fight bears and stuff. And there was an understanding between the man and the woman, whether it's the father and the mother, as to when that time was going to be for a boy and how to prepare him for that time. And for the mother, how to get out of the way as well. Mm -hmm. Because as a mom, you want to nurture in the whole nine. Um, I think one of the things that's happened to our community in particular, they strategically removed the men. And now you're having a lot of boys crossing that threshold into manhood without any rites of passage, uh, those boys tend to be pseudo-masculine. They tend to be super emotional. They tend to be super aggressive. 
And they think that's what manhood looks like because it's never been modeled for them. So unfortunately, I'm not saying that, you know, some mothers, some single mothers aren't doing an incredible job raising boys, but in mass on the macro, right. the numbers would say that, no, women are not by themselves doing a good job raising boys, especially black boys. So, so if you, so, okay. So mm-hmm. I, and I totally get the statistics about like mm-hmm. all of the, again, I don't mean to depress us, but like all, you know, the, it's the depressing. Social, yeah, social <laughs> yeah, it is. It is depressing. Yeah. The single, single homes are just really challenging in mm-hmm. terms of like, they're, you know, they're more likely to end up in jail, more likely to be a teen mom, more likely um, to not graduate from high school. Like it just, it's, it's off the charts in terms of like the challenges that children from single, um, single parent households or, or I don't know if it's single parent or just single parent. Because it, it, I, I think it's different if there is a co-parent, even if mm. they're in a different household. I think it's just if you have one. Invo- I'm gonna say it like this: one involved, involved parent. parent. Yeah, 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 one involved yeah. parent. Um, it, it's the 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 challenges that our kids are facing are really are really challenging. And so if but we're but we're at this point where seventy percent of our kids are being raised in single parent households. So what do moms need to do if you're in that situation? But you want to kind of tip the the balance back for your boys, especially for our boys, because mm-hmm. we're we're struggling. I mean, and we yeah. know this living in Chicago, we are struggling with with um, uh, academic performance for our for our young boys, for the the criminal you know boys involved in the criminal justice system mm-hmm. in Chicago. Just the violence is just so much. So what oh, yeah. do, you know, like how do we take? We need to take this power back. So what are some suggestions that you have because we're in the situation that? We're hold in? on, hold on, hold on. Alan, don't just get to slide in the whole way. Because <laughs> my pushback mm-hmm. in all of these conversations, because a lot of people have been having them, and I think we need to have them yeah. a lot, right? Mm-hmm. But I always like to challenge the men to redirect that energy towards the men. Sure. Yes. Where your brothers go. Mm-hmm. Why are we not holding them accountable? Why, mm-hmm. when this Roe v. Wade thing came out on another show that I work on, I mean, the men just were like, women need to pick better. Do you think that we are purposely picking wrong? No, we were, mm-hmm. we, we, we got dragged into some of this through a lot, sure. right? I, we, yeah. we, we're not all just, this isn't life that we chose. This isn't the life that we chose for us. And I'm mm-hmm. a sitcom baby. So I grew up watching TV. So I wanted all of the Martin and Gina's and all of the stuff. Mm-hmm. It's somewhere in between where the men get to, they get an out. Mm-hmm. And then once they get an out, now all of a sudden we're to blame. We're left with everything on our shoulders as if, and then if we speak up too much about it, now we be a masculine. Mm. And it's one of those things that's irritating because then we get into this queen king culture, which just irritates me. <laughs> yeah. And I get it, right? It's the level of respect, but yeah. be kingly. Hey, be kingly. And I, so I always mm. like the pushback of, yes, what can women do and how do we raise our children? But I, yeah. yeah. Why, do we just get, why do y'all just get it out? And y'all I, mean it. Man. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a fantastic question. And that's, you know, a question that, you know, I talk about a lot. I think, um, first and foremost, (laughs) I I think a lot of us downplay the power of women and the power of femininity. And when I say that, I don't just mean like the human species. I mean every other species, because ultimately women are the gatekeepers of the next generation. So women literally decide who gets cloned and who doesn't. Right. So in the beginning of the like something I tell women all the time or or young girls, I'm like, yo, if you if you're not willing to potentially risk your life, risk death to clone this man, why are you sleeping with him? That's something I tell girls. Good stuff. What? Sure. 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 No, we're going to cut this one in the book. Nip this one in the book. Because Mm -hmm. why are, why do we also give permission? Why don't we keep that same energy for men? Why don't they stop sleeping was, with women that they don't that. want to mother their children? Yeah. I just we just leave yeah. with, with we're talking about kings, queens. Well then mm. let's leave with the kings. Well, let's he, talk about them first. Okay. Yeah, okay, we, hold on. He said let's let let's let him finish. Yeah, yeah. No, Go so ahead. so like I was saying, so that that's first and foremost. So uh, women get to decide who gets replicated and who doesn't. Um, The second thing is because my audience is mostly men 
And a lot of their grievances stem from or surround this concept of, I quote unquote, did all the right things, especially as a black man. I did all, I went to school, I got the job, I'm a good dude, but I wasn't picked, right? So there's a lot of resentment coming from men saying that I actively watched women pick the wrong men and then expect me to take the blame for and the responsibility for the men that they picked. Because when they're having conversations with their circle of friends, these aren't the men that women tend to be complaining about. But unfortunately, I think what's popular in the media, what's popular on movies, what's popular in novels aren't healthy men. But unfortunately, because a lot of girls consume this content, they're, and they're also growing up in toxic situations, their ideas of what a man looks like tends to be an unhealthy man. And there's a disconnect between the healthy men who don't get chosen and the unhealthy men who do get chosen end up being who they were. And then this blame gets shifted to all men. And that's all men are saying. So when I, when I talk to women who are already in that situation, number one, men are not that clever. I want to put that out there. <laughs> women say that we're liars, this, this, and that. Men are not that clever. I've been around no. older men my no. entire life. And this is what I mean by that. What I mean by that is, you know, I'll have conversations with, um, even on my channel, like one girl, uh, she was dating a rapper, right? And she said he was signed. And she said that um, he, you know, he, he, he yeah, you, you remember the conversation? <laughs> she said that he was going to be successful, this, this, and that. And then I, I questioned her about it. I was like, you know, what was his worth, uh, work ethic like? She was like, uh, hmm, it, you know, he would work on his music. I was like, how reliable was he as a person? If he said he was going to do something, did he actually do it? She was like, no, not really. But again, she fell in love with her idea of him as mm -hmm. opposed to who he actually was. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, even men do the same thing. We'll fall in love with our idea of a woman as opposed to who she wants to be. So she wants to be a stripper in Magic City. We think she could be a housewife. And then <laughs> there's going to be conflict. But right. people are not that good liars. That That's the thing. That's No, that's they, they actually are. And, and that's that, they actually are. I've been there, done that. There mm -hmm. are some people that this is what they do for a lifestyle. So mm -hmm. I, I'm going to wholeheartedly disagree because I've seen it and I've experienced people change. There mm -hmm. are some people who are narcissistic and manipulative. And when they're good at their craft, when they mm -hmm. practice it, it, does, it doesn't mean that you're not paying attention. There are some sure. people who are very adept at hiding that and so here here's where i think women end up getting defensive um i think for the most part we can take critique because we live a life where black as black women especially black women we're constantly critiqued so you know a lot of times we have some tough skin because unfortunately that's just what life has afforded us it mm -hmm. just becomes problematic to have men talking to us about what it's like to be a woman i just mm -hmm. want men to keep that same energy and stop talking to me and talk to your friends your brother your uncle all of this like don't don't use that don't waste that energy on me Right. Like mm -hmm. I can probably we probably got it under control. It just it feels very condescending mm -hmm. when men always want to tell a woman what they need to do. I'm saying, like, take the women out the conversation. If y'all mm -hmm. got the answers, then work it out and come back and be kings. Yeah. I guess I'm going to disagree a little bit with that, um, Femi, because I, I do think that it is is helpful. And again, as a person who's been married for 20 years <laughs> and is way out of the game, but it's. For me, I'm looking at but I'm looking at it from a perspective of this is information that is helpful to me to learn, right? Mm -hmm. And so if these conversations are going on and these guys are saying this is what I'm looking for in a woman, mm -hmm. it is helpful to understand that. Is it help it, it is helpful to understand like this is what I'm looking for in a woman? Not in the delivery of what I need to do if you're not talking to other men. Don't talk to me about how to be a better woman if you're not giving me a man to be a better woman. Woman too. It's That's not. Right. Mm -hmm. You get it right now. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> no, because we. You know what? We hear it all the time. Where women right. are like, we have we to do, change. Though. That's the thing. I don't know. That do. I have at least. Okay, let me speak for myself. I don't know that I've heard it in this way. And one of the things, and it's 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 not a lie. You know, it's, it's very simple. There. You know, the things that I'm getting over and over and over and on these things are um, somebody who is um, agreeable. Somebody mm -hmm. who is. In good fitness, somebody who is um, 
uh, not doesn't have a, a promiscuous past. Now that's something I have an issue with because I think <laughs> it should, that should be on both sides. And I will get there, but because uh, I, I I do I have a, a serious um, challenge mm. with the idea of. I want somebody who is not promiscuous, which I understand that, but then yeah. I'm going to be promiscuous myself, you know? So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like, excuse me, because I'm like, when I was looking for somebody like, to me, a hoe was a hoe, whether you were male or female. And I <laughs> yeah. didn't want to deal with you if that's what you did, you know, <laughs> yes, judgment, you know, if that's what yeah. you did. But I didn't, I didn't want to be involved in, in that. You know, I didn't want that whatever diseases and energy and, 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 you know, whatever that you had out there. So, so that kind of stuff again, but it's been interesting to me to listen to. And I'm thinking about, I'm taking notes from a perspective of, okay, what am I going to share with my daughter? What am I going to share with my son in terms of qualities mm -hmm. to look for in a suitable mate? You know, yeah. what, yeah. what are some of the things that, that we should be um, helping them identify? And it's not the flashy, suave talking person in the middle of the floor who, mm -hmm. who all the girls want, you know, that's the kind of stuff that I really think like the values, what values do we, do we yeah. um, hold in high esteem? You know, and a lot of times we hold in high esteem the values that aren't that don't make good qualities in a long term mate. Right. And we find out after we, you know, invested a lot of time in these people and invested our bodies and invested our, yeah. you know, had baby, unfortunately, with, with these people. And that's the kind of thing I'm wondering, like, what what are the things that we should be talking to our kids in terms of being intentional? Because right. I want my children to, to have um, healthy. I want them to be have healthy relationships when they grow up. I don't know what, you know, I, I don't know, you know, I, I don't agree with this polygamy thing that, that, <laughs> that, that I'm starting to hear. I do believe that men, can, yeah. I'm married to one, men can be monogamous. I do, I do agree. I do believe that. Um, and, and so those are some of the things I think that it becomes when you, when we listen, I don't have to agree with everything mm -hmm. that they're saying. I don't have to agree with any of it, but when we listen, we can learn at least from their perspective, you know, like t taking the hands and, yeah. you know, spit out the, spit out the sticks. Yeah. And and if I if I may like respond to uh, Femi, um, Femi, so a uh, Femi, Femi, I'm sorry, I, I apologize. No, Femi is actually a Nigerian name. Yeah, yeah, Femi is a Nigerian name, so like it, it's spelled the same. So I was I was thrown off, but um, yeah. So um, speaking about you know the whole narcissism thing, statistically, narcissistic personality disorder is a, is an anomaly. Most people are not. It's like two percent of the population like that's actually clinically diagnosed narcissist what is true though <laughs> what what <laughs> what is true but but what is true is that human nature actually wants to believe like we want to believe people we want to believe things and you know so you can say the vast majority of us are gullible as opposed to the vast majority of people are good liars but the other piece that i i i did want to say uh I think for a lot of reasons, men are forced to understand women in a way that women are not forced to understand men. And what I mean by that is, as a man, literally everything you do from the time you hit puberty is to try to impress women. Like I've had people comment on my channel and they'll, they'll tell me that, yo, the reason I serve 20 years in prison is because I was trying to do this thug thing to get this woman's attention and it didn't work. Or you have some men who like they're in jail for beating up their sister's abusive boyfriend and they're mm -hmm. still in jail and she's back with the boyfriend. So like mm -hmm. women are a huge part of men's um, motivation. Matter of fact, one of my guests, he said that, you know, a few years ago, women said that they liked uh, men to be bearded. And now men from 14 all the way to 54 are growing struggle beers. They're not connecting or anything. <laughs> so at the core, <laughs> men are primed to listen to women. Unfortunately, I don't think that energy is reciprocated, particularly if you're an attractive woman, particularly if you are, you know, if you have a lot of sexual attention, you don't have to do anything <laughs> to get a man, right? Whereas men, we have to make sure we've got the right clothes on, the right shoes on, the right job. Now it's whole six figure thing. Now you need to have a certain number of followers on Instagram or Facebook, or whatever the case may be to have clout. So men have to listen to women and understand women, uh, at least <laughs> to be able to manipulate y'all to have sex or whatever we want to do. But women don't necessarily have to do that. So a lot of the pushback that happens sometimes is like men have to have a working understanding. 
women, on the other hand, it's like, why do you think you know me and I don't know you? When it's like a lot of times, a lot of our women, a lot of women in general haven't had to know men and they don't care to. That's the other piece, too. Mm-hmm. I, I agree with you. I don't think that we don't want to get to know men. I think then it just goes back down to interpersonal communication and mm. guards up and all that other stuff. I don't, it's hard for me to believe. I, I completely agree with you in that one respect that we mm. don't have to, and especially then if we were raised and we didn't, weren't in a two parent house to sure. understand the dynamics sometimes of men and women. Mm. I mean, I, fortunately I was raised in a two parent household, so I get it and I understand men and dynamics and sometimes being quiet and the, all those things that yeah. naturally a person who did you may want to pop off and you can't because he just needs some space or he just needs some time. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you with that for sure. Um, But I think, um, to Neil, actually, I think one of the reasons that it may feel like that men have, that men have to understand women and women don't necessarily spend as much time understanding men. I'm not going to necessarily disagree to that point. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that a lot of time, well, if you think about, from child development, Mm -hmm. girls are taught that it's okay to express emotions and boys are not right. So boys don't necessarily get to have emotions. They they're told, stop crying, get yourself together. So then when you bring those two dynamics in a relationship, I don't think it's that women don't necessarily want to listen to a man. I think that number one, we've been like taught to express how we feel and Mm -hmm. men have not. So when you bring that dynamic in, it's like, I'm not, you're not saying anything for me to listen. Now, of course, it's not a hundred percent scenario, but men don't necessarily, Mm -hmm. it takes them a longer time to be Mm -hmm. transparent about their emotions. One of the things that I believe um, that is important in relationships and marriage, I think that sometimes people wait to go to counseling until they have a problem. Mm -hmm. But if, if people see counseling as a, an important maintenance part of their marriage, I think it'll be so much healthier because some of it is just learning how to communicate. I'm not by any means saying that my husband and I are perfect. We we disagree mm. on a lot of key points, but I will say, and, and you know, both of us have been married again and we, you know, known each other, whatever, but we communicate well. I mean, we have really hard conversations mm. about how we feel, about how the other one makes us feel, about how those actions make us feel. But it, again, it goes Goes back to intentionality, and yeah. so, and, but here's the key thing: none of this is gonna make a difference. Men can't tell men, men can't tell women. None of us can do any of this until you heal yourself, right? And that's that's part of it. People don't spend enough time working on themselves. They want this other people, this other person, to come in as a perfect package. Heal what's going on with you, mm-hmm. and I, then you can be better in a relationship. And I think you said a good word there, perfect package, Femi, because um, nobody is perfect. And I think that's mm-hmm. another thing is like we expect this person to, you know, check off all the boxes and be this yeah. perfect person. And and we're not perfect. That's one. That's one thing that I learned in my you know, I told you guys before that I had, the, the you know, the mm-hmm. sh- struggle first year of marriage. And it came down to having these expectations for him, but yeah. not realizing that or not being really willing to acknowledge, you know, my, um, the part that I play in our, in our, in our conflict, you know, Mm -hmm. the, 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 the the imperfections Mm -hmm. in myself, you know what I mean? But let me tell you that one of the things talking about like femininity and being strong. So to was kind of laughing in the beginning, right? When you talk about being a leader and all of that, Mm -hmm. when I'm out in the world, I have to be, I I have to be strong. That's what my career demands of me. Like there's no place in the world that I really get to be weak. Mm -hmm. And so my husband was accustomed to that. So it took him a long time to figure out to just hold me when I was crying because he had to, he had to come to grips with who I am in the world is not who I am as as his wife. Mm. So that, that weak part of me that he has to deal with, or he has to know how to nurture and comfort. He was like, girl, why are you crying? Like you do this all day long. Like what is wrong with you? Until I'm like, listen, that's me in the world. That's not me as your wife. And so just figuring out how to even deal with each other emotionally. And now when I'm crying, he like, oh, okay. She just cleansing herself she's okay but it took him a while to just really be okay with my tears because Mm -hmm. we are so in a lot of ways men are so used to seeing us so strong that they don't know how to handle us when they see the softer side of us and you know that 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 is exactly why i've taken the approach that i have because you know 
first of all, like you'll notice, I don't interview anybody who's not chocolate. Like everybody I interview is black, right? And the conversation, I'm sure white people got their own issues, but like the conversation for me is exclusively black. And the reason that is, is because there's certain concessions and there's certain grace that we must have for one another. And one of those things, for instance, black women have been made to be strong. Black women have been made to feel ugly. Black women have been made to feel worthless. Black Mm -hmm. men have been made to feel um, impotent. Black men have been made to feel like weak. But they not. But yeah, and and that's true. But I think I think what happens and why it seems like, you know, combat a lot of times is that I don't think we properly pay homage to what was done to each of us individually. A lot of times we're just comparing versus like, yo, it's certain things I have to not necessarily tiptoe around, but handle with like kit gloves Mm -hmm. with this black woman and vice versa with this black man. So to your point earlier, like. We need to recognize that, listen, a lot of our black boys in particular, like not only are they being raised by a woman, but they're also being educated by women. Some boys don't see a male teacher or authority figure until they enter college, if they enter college. Mm. Right. So we have to pay homage to what that means. Like, what are the consequences of that? Right. So all I'm saying is that if we took more of an interest in the psychology of the pathology of each side i think we would have not just conversations but conversations with comprehension right because i think that's more important than just talking one of the things that i had to learn that really flipped (laughs) it flipped the light switch for me somebody told me that you know whereas men process our um emotions through our thoughts women process their thoughts through their emotions so a lot of times a woman will quickly say i feel dot 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 Mm -hmm. where a man will say i think dot 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 and it pisses men off (laughs) and i'm sure it pisses women off because a lot of times oh y'all don't express yourselves enough this this and that but again if we are able to like comprehend that and pay homage to why is his psychology like that as opposed to his psychology should be more like mine. We're not the same. Yeah. Yeah. I love this. I love this conversation. So I want to kind of get back to my other question about okay. like, <laughs> what are we doing or what should we be doing to, to help? And I, again, I know this is a, a larger uh, conversation, but what could yeah. we be doing to, as the village to help these boys um, that don't, like you say, may not have a, a stable male um, figure in their life until maybe, you know, college or whatever. Um, how can we, what should we be doing to intentionally like try to like write that, you know, or I guess in part <laughs> the, mm. the, the proper masculine training that they need if we're, you know, if we're emotional women, like what, mm. what could we be doing? I'll, I'll, I'll answer that by telling you what some of the feedback that I've gotten mm-hmm. has been as far as like the men saying what went wrong with them as it relates mm. to their moms. Okay. Number one, the thing that I've seen uh, come up the most is their mom spent a lot of time and energy um, insulting the father. Mm. Um, You know, and for good reason, a lot of times the father wasn't involved, whatever the case may be. But the reality is a lot of boys process that as, well, if he ain't ish. I'm me. I ain't ish, right? Okay. Okay. The second thing that I see happen a lot is a lot of boys, I mean, a lot of men have even said that I didn't become like my father, right? I didn't become run to the streets like my father. They said, I became like the men that I saw coming in, in and out of my house. Mm. The third thing is there needs to be I think it starts with humility, but there there needs to be a concerted effort um, by women. Because, I mean, for all intents and purposes, whether we like it or not, I don't think it should be the case. And I'm working on that. But our community in particular is run by women. And that's by design. I don't think it's y'all's fault. I think that's by design. So there needs to be an intentional effort, especially when a boy crosses that age of like 12, 13. He needs to be in sports. He needs to be around mentors. He needs to be. And, and another thing that I saw that was really powerful, I think it was um, Dr. Warren Farrell talks about it. Being, being mentored 
has good effects for boys. But the thing that they found has a larger effect is being a mentor. When a boy mm -hmm. is beholden to a younger boy, mm. you know, to, to show him the way, they actually okay. perform better. Mm. You know, so certain things like that. But again, I don't have all the answers. I'm right, just right. trying to aggregate as much information yeah. as I can. Okay. Yeah. You know what, um, Antonio, I know we are getting ready to come to a close. <laughs> Here's something... Um, as I wrap up and something that I'm really grappling and struggling with, because it's not so, like when I'm at work, right. It's not even a conversation that we can have mm -hmm. because it becomes too politically incorrect to have it, mm -hmm. but it's like, right. How we're able to bring in our different opinions and, and see like agree and disagree in this right. form about masculinity and right. femininity right. until we tell the truth. And this is why we have to pick, the right schools for our kids and in schools that align to their values, because the truth of the matter is the school system is actually taking away the ideas and concepts of masculinity and femininity. Absolutely. Things have to be much more gender neutral. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. I used to do boys assemblies and girls Absolutely. assemblies. Now I'm like, I don't even know if I can mm. do those. Now I got to read the, the guidance. They and, and assemblies. So <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, yeah. I needed somebody to talk to the boys, right? I need, I need to have a conversation. I told the girls my story about like what happens and like just how how you can um, people can prey on young girls. That was a conversation I wanted to have with the girls, but right. then it's like people get to pick. I'm mm -hmm. saying to moms, we need to pick schools, um, and we need to be so such advocates in our school system because I'm telling you all this concept of masculinity and femininity, it is being diluted um, and being erased in schools. And so if you're relying on the school to uphold mm -hmm. your values around those topics, um, it just won't happen. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's fading. It's it's going quickly. Um, I'm I'm concerned that in three to five years mm -hmm. we won't even have male and female mentoring programs. I mean, anytime Ooh. we're arguing about the Girl Scouts being girls, and mm -hmm. people are saying, "Well, I want my like somebody else to have access to it," and I'm listen. I'm not even. This is not pro or con against anything. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about in the realm of this conversation and we do need to think about the impact of that on our boys growing up into mm -hmm. the type of men we would want you know we want our Absolutely. daughters to be able to date you know and or, or our girls right yeah. our girls mm -hmm. like if, if men are taking on these quote unquote feminine traits mm -hmm. if that's what we're talking about right then who are they looking to for kingship mm -hmm. if their kings have been taught to actually behave right. like queens Right. So, so there, there's a lot of conversation around that. Absolutely. And I, I do want to say, you know, in, in girls, the fact girls are a lot more adaptable than boys. Girls are a lot more adaptable than boys, in my experience. And, and socially speaking as well, um, the, the book that I was referencing by uh, Dr. Warren Farrell is called The Boy Crisis. Mm -hmm. And he actually hyper fixates on the black male because a lot of these things that are happening are affecting the black male disproportionately. And when we look at it in historical context, like this country was built on the labor of black boys, the death of black boys. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our girls will be a consequence of how well our boys are doing. And I think that's that's part of, you know, where it gets contentious. But like our girls are going to be fine. <laughs> girls are adaptable. Girls are going to like black women are leading in uh, degrees right now. They're starting businesses at the fastest rate, whereas black boys are still feeding the prison industrial complex. Mm -hmm. So like that needs triage. And part mm -hmm. of that triage, for better or worse, if you if you dislike a Kevin Samuels, if you like a Kevin Samuels, what he did for 1.4 million people, and we can't under, understate right. that, he right. created a standard. He created right. a North Star. Whether it, that North Star was the aesthetic of a man, how to dress, whether that North Star was the salary of a man, what you need to take care of your family, how you carry yourself, your social profile, he created a standard. And mm -hmm. I think for boys, especially for men, we need lines in the sand. Girls don't need lines as much, <laughs> but boys literally need like I played football in high school. Kevin Samuels is not is every coach I've ever had. 
<laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and that's how boys process information. Now, I understand it doesn't work with women, and that's why I take the tone that I take. But boys, there's a different, there's a different nature and we need different things. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, this is, this was, uh, I think. This is good. It was a good start. Cause I mean, we just like scratching the tip it's of the It's a lot. Iceberg. Yeah. It's a lot there. Yeah. A lot, a lot to think about, a lot to mm. process. I really appreciate you feeling, being willing to, um, to come on and kind of speak, you know, to share your thoughts, share your perspective. Absolutely. It's we we are we're a talkative bunch, but it's important, I think, to get uh, uh, a a valid male mm. point of view. We don't always agree. Mm. We don't have to always agree, but it's interesting to at least hear where the yeah. other side. Is if, if, from. if 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 I could say this this one thing, um, one of the things that's actually surprised me since finding success on YouTube. Right now, we're at thirty thousand subscribers. The majority, <laughs> thank you. Very good. The 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 branding around like the manosphere and and these spaces where men talk, the barbershop and the whole nine, mm-hmm. it's uh it's believed to be like incels and nerds and dudes who haven't found success who are pissed off at women. Actually, what I found is a lot of these men are married. Mm-hmm. A lot of these men are divorced. My mm-hmm. largest age demographic is between thirty four and fifty four. Mm-hmm. These are not boys. <laughs> so mm-hmm. like when when a, a lot of this rhetoric is coming from the male side, it's seasoned, it's aged. It's it's not, you know, fly mm-hmm. by now, yeah, yeah. by mm-hmm. night. And I think part of the resistance sometimes, especially from younger women, is thinking that, oh, it's just boys who are upset that I didn't text them back. And it's like, no, it's deeper than that, mm-hmm. because a lot of the boys are doing the work. And the only reason A lot of people don't know this. The only reason Kevin even transitioned to talking to women in the first place was when he took on these male clients as an image consultant, these men who are making $250,000 a year, $300,000 a year, black pilots, black engineers, black doctors, they came back to him after looking and smelling good. And they said, listen, Kevin, we can't find any women. We can't find any suitable women. (laughs) And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because I expected that. Because I got a couple girlfriends. Send them my way. I will <laughs> because them because here's here's what here's what happened. Right. Here's what happened. And this has been my experience as well. This has been my friends' experience as well. All my friends make six figures, and they're black, mm-hmm. and they're my age. Right. Mm-hmm. What they're finding is, can I find a beautiful woman? Yes. Can I find a woman who makes as much money as me? Yes. Can I find a woman who's nice? No. Can I find a woman who's agreeable? No. Can I find a woman who doesn't just minimize me to the amount of zeros in my bank account or my height or things I can't control? No. Mm -hmm. So again, if a lot of the men that women said they want were being rewarded by good outcomes with women, it would be different. (laughs) But not only are the (laughs) nerds not getting good outcomes, the good men are not getting good outcomes as well. So um, that's part of the conversation I'm really fascinated to really dive into and, and explore more. I mean, it's it's something to, I mean, we, it, from the, from a female perspective, we can say like, you know, we know, and I'm sure everybody on this panel knows a great women, you know, mm-hmm. um, again, but I'm not in relationships with them too. Mm-hmm. So there, I mean, there is that too. But, well, um, well, well, I, I just want to say this last piece. I'm sorry. Women evaluate women how they would evaluate a man. Yeah, and I understand that. I, see, I've learned. I've learned. Men look at different things. I'm learning. Men look exactly. at different things. So she's not, your friends so aren't, my aren't good women. Education, so there my we man go. Here, my man is here, uh, point, uh, point of there view. There we go. Yeah. On, I do. I have, I, I, I can probably count, you know, do, do, without even thinking about, you know, list out a number of, of women that would fit that. And it's the, I guess the question is, um, and uh, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to have you back, you know, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Allen. We have to have you back. But the question, the, the question is basically, how do we find each other? You know, mm. yeah, I do believe there are great men out there. I believe I know that there are great women out there. How do we get? How do we get them in the same room to find one another? Is is the is the question? And then on top of that, how do we translate these great qualities into things that our kids are picking up, so that you know. Right. Uh, the next generation of spouses can go forth, be fruitful, and multiply. <laughs> first, first of all, I told y'all we about to have a mom squad arranged uh, <laughs> know, right? with our kids. <laughs> <laughs> We're dating. We're going out on a date like yeah. on, like on um, a. Good, you remember yeah. that Good, good Morning Vietnam? Yeah. Going out on the on the, on the yeah. family date. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, talk about a lot of stuff, but 
Yes, Alan, you are awesome. Moms, thank you, you guys thank have you to guys. check his, his. I promise you, I went down. A, I went down a hole yesterday. <laughs> so good. I love the format. Love the layout. Thank and you're only on YouTube, right? Only on YouTube. Yeah. Start with the one, Tony. Did I post the one with the girl? With Start the, with that lady. With they lady, were talking posted. about marriages and oh, thank you for being on. Thank you for your perspective. Thank you for having me. My face, my face was. <laughs> my face. <laughs> um, but this, this was good, and I think it's 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 always good for just some some reflection and all that other stuff. And you know, mm-hmm. you left us with some things. You know, I'm just gonna leave you. I can't wait to hear or find <laughs> an episode where you are speaking directly to these kings. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, oh yeah, and, no, we we're we're, we're and, working on a series called Black Men Talk. And okay, good. what yeah, what I plan on doing with that, um, because I again I was talking to black men in college. What I plan on doing with that is um, having one-on-one conversations. So it's similar to the, the format now, but with different archetypes of black men. So I want to talk mm-hmm. to a black doctor. I want to talk to, and I've had these men reach out to me. I've, I've, mm-hmm. I, I, I had somebody who's a he's a, a an executive for a Fortune 500 tech company, like. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> no, no, he's he's married. He's married. But you don't want his name. <laughs> but the thing is, like, I, I want to not only show black boys the blueprint on how to become these different archetypes, whichever one that they're interested in, outside of rapper and athlete, but mm-hmm. also to show black women the diversity of black male thought. Yeah. So, like yeah. that, that is something. The first episode I haven't dropped yet, but it's a police officer. His name's Nathan Daly. Um, He's also on YouTube as well. Phenomenal individual. He's working on police reform. He's working on educating our community about how to interact with police. So, like, the work is being done. (laughs) I can assure you the work is being done. Well, we look forward to that. Um, So thanks again, Alan. Where do they find you? on? uh, Yeah. Yeah. So on YouTube, it's just we need to talk one word. Um, On Instagram, it's WNT Talk. And that's pretty much it. Awesome. Well, and yeah, yeah. I, 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 I wholeheartedly like to know, recommend <laughs> spending, spending a few few minutes in the day um, checking yeah. out the conversations. They're really, really interesting. Appreciate yeah, you guys. Good. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. Where Thank you guys from? for having Where me. No, so I'm I'm from Nigeria originally, but I live in South Carolina. So I'm, I'm in South Carolina right now. OK, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. When you bring that tan chair to Chicago, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> Thank you. And happy birthday. I appreciate it. Thank you. And I just want to say before we get out of here, we're going to have a a really um, needed conversation next week. This is May is um, Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking with Deborah. Deb is coming on. Yeah, we're talking with Deborah. And a lot of people read her story.